All right, just doing a quick video to go over what I am calling the ACI Power Deployment Tool, um, which is basically a Python library that I built. <clears throat> a little bit of background, um, I've been using Postman uh, quite a bit for ACI deployments. Actually, let me just uh, go ahead and bring that guy up here so I can kind of talk through. Uh, so I've got these uh, nine deployment scripts that I've been kind of using. Um, or folders or collections, right? And then I use Postman Runner, uh, which is awesome utility, right? So uh, basically build a spreadsheet and the variables that, uh, so MCP password here, APIC, all of these things, right? Uh, the variables correspond to uh, header columns, basically, in the, in the spreadsheet. And so Postman Runner will load the spreadsheet or the CSV file up, and it'll loop through um, for each row in the spreadsheet, replacing variables like MCP password with whatever's in the spreadsheet. Um, so that's really useful utility for doing lots of ACI deployments, right? And so I've gotten down to the point where we can do, uh, you know, 80 plus percent of a, an entire ACI deployment, um, you know, in five minutes, right? Obviously tons and tons and tons of work up front to make sure we're, you know, building and planning and designing and everything correctly, of course. Um, and, and then, you know, building this kind of master workbook or deploy book, run book, whatever you want to call it. Um, and, and that's worked out pretty well, but Postman has, in my mind, kind of some failings, right? So the first one that was annoying to me is I have these nine collections. You can kind of ignore that. I was screwing around. Um, so there's these nine collections and each one of these, uh, I build the spreadsheet out and then numbers, uh, you know, ex or Excel, whatever I use numbers on a Mac, uh, numbers spreadsheet, and then I have to export it to a CSV. Uh, in order for Postman to kind of consume it or load it up or do whatever it does. Um, so that that's annoying, right? So because I have nine collections, that means I have nine pages files, which means I have nine CSVs. So I'm, you know, already up to having a shitload of files in order to do a deployment. Now, given the, you know, the, the level of time and energy it saves, that's pretty, pretty cool, right? Can't, can't, can't beggars can't be choosers. It's pretty, pretty slick. But the, the next bit that's kind of frustrating um, let me kind of off screen here, pull up a, uh, a spreadsheet from one of the, try to get no customer names on this here. Um, so this would be, uh, that's a bad example. Sorry, I'm stand by one. Uh, so this would be an example of one of the spreadsheets that I use for, and this is actually for this collection one. So one of my kind of complaints right now is that I don't get good feedback from Postman with in terms of what posts actually failed um, or which ones succeeded even, right? Uh, obviously, if you can go into the fabric, you can validate stuff. You know, presumably, you can get your scripts dialed in and then you'll be good to go. Uh, but it's really easy to, you know, maybe that's I-22 or something, or capital I-22, so it looks like, you know, 122 and, and, and you, you know, mess it up, right? So it's it's easy to do that, and then you don't, without going to look for this specific object, it's really easy to miss that this this one thing got broken. And, you know, usually it's it's pretty minor, um, but still, it's kind of, it's kind of an annoyance. Um, so one of the, the things that kind of irks me is that you don't get that feedback. Then, then the next bit with Postman, so I have this broken out, so you can see VPC groups here, then VPCs pairs of switches. So these are the VPC groups, so then down here is the pairs of switches. Now I could certainly have these kind of all in one row, um, because the way Postman kind of iterates over each of the rows and the columns, it'll only load up the variables for the specific call, or for the specific call, excuse me. It, it will loop over every single row in the spreadsheet, trying to find a, a home, basically, for every one of these variables, for every one of the calls uh, in the collection, but basically what that ends up, what ends up happening because of that is, for example, VPC groups is going to fail on every single iteration through this spreadsheet, except for these first, you know, 10 rows or 11 rows or whatever that is. Uh, so that becomes kind of, uh, you know, obnoxious, right? Because you, you don't get the feedback that VPC groups failed because you just see so many 400 errors. Um, and it doesn't necessarily, indicate kind of really success or failure. So what I wanted to do um, with this tool that I guess I built uh, is 
take the, the functionality of Postman, but have a single source of truth, I guess, if you will, single spreadsheet that uh, I, I could run one script against one time and get valid, you know, at the very least past success for every single line on the spreadsheet for, for every single post. So I basically took all of the JSON payloads that I was using in Postman, cleaned them up and put them into Python. And that's effectively what this, um, this library is really doing, right? It's got a couple different classes, kind of one for each section, right? So we got fabric pod policies and we got, uh, you know, Oh, it's, a, it's a really long file, but we got tenant policies and L3 out policies and all of that kind of stuff, right? Um, as long as we can just pick on LLDP, it's real simple. Uh, it's just the JSON. There's nothing fancy. You call this this function. You hand it the, the variables that it needs um, after instantiating the class so that we get uh, the APIC and the cookies that we need to, to actually successfully authenticate to the APIC to make the post. Uh, and then you pass it the in this case, name, state, status. That's all it requires for LLDP, right? Um, and I can go ahead and deploy LLDP. So this is this is effectively the, the library that I've kind of built uh, as a replacement. Uh, one thing I wanted to do with this was to have this decoupled from whatever the kind of, I guess, front end is, if you will. Um, I started kind of down this adventure, uh, and I ended up having very uh, intertwined uh, Python script it was just this giant script, and it did what I wanted it to do. Uh, but then, when I wanted to say, you know, ingest a, an Excel file, um, and then do all of these things, right? Uh, the the ingestion of the Excel kind of file kind of got lumped into all of the functions, so I couldn't cleanly pull out, let's just say, NTP, and just do an NTP thing. So I wanted to decouple those, right? So I I wrote this library uh, for Python that I'm calling ACI Power Deployment Tool, and then the basic front the front end for that is similar to, to postman right where i have da, 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 a spreadsheet i'll just pick on pod policies because it's nice and simple and the spreadsheet is pretty much you know four tabs that's it this will deploy an entire fabric right um, so first column here we've got function um, this is corresponding to the names of the functions in the library and then these are the, the variables. Uh, some of them are optional, so like these guys are optional at the moment. Um, and you know, if it's, uh, I'll try to update all these sections to kind of have some notes, but also the library itself has notes about everything, right? You can see like domain default, that's optional. I'll prefer this for DNS stuff, um, optional. Uh, but basically what, what happens is that this file, I'm just calling main.py right here, loads this spreadsheet and then for every tab, um, loads all of the names in this into a list, right? We just call that the function list. You can see that right here, actually. Um, it calls this other function, find keys. Uh, I'm just calling these keys or keywords or you know, whatever you want to call it. Uh, it loads these. And then so for, for this tab, for example, I have you know only these six or whatever functions. And then it goes and it refers to the function name in the library and passes these variables, um, and it'll just pass it as quarks. That way, it doesn't have to be all, uh, you know, positional or anything. Um, so it actually loads up a dictionary for so for commission hardware, right? I have three lines, so I'd have three dictionary entries, and each dictionary entry would have, you know, these fields, right? Um, so that's that's kind of the gist, right? Is single single spreadsheet deploy all of the things, and then have a little bit of uh, pass fail, a little bit of error checking to make sure that you're successfully doing stuff. So I've injected a few uh, things that will fail when we go and deploy this. Uh, I think filters, this was one, right? So destination start and end, taco is unfortunately not a valid uh, destination start or destination end port for a filter. Um, so when, when, we, when we run this, we should get a, uh, something you know, mad at us here in this fault tab. So let's see if uh, my simulator, my ACI simulator on my laptop, let's see if that's gonna be uh, happy enough to let us do this thing. So that's just, we're just gonna go ahead and run this guy, this file main. And again, basically logs into the APIC that returns cookies. We load up the workbook, we copy it to, uh, we, we make a copy of it in Excel read. So that we're using two Python libraries, uh, Excel read and Excel write. Um, and that's to handle the XLS file. Fortunately, no XLSX. Uh, that's a 
something I want to try to work on in the future. But for now, it's just nice and simple libraries to, to load the, the Excel file and then to also write back to it. Um, then we're basically just going to run access pod tenant and L3 out policies. And hopefully we will get some success. Uh, there is some, some standard out, but I tried to eliminate most of that um, and just have it actually update the spreadsheet. So let's go ahead and try to run that. Yeah, I think I need to put a pause in there because uh, it's really mad. So now what we're gonna do, oh, don't say that. So now, and this is actually kind of a good example because we can see, uh, so <laughs> formatting goes away with Excel, right? Um, for the whole spreadsheet, so that's that's a thing. Um, so the nice, that's why I have a deploy master, and then this is the actual kind of read-write one for the script, so it's just to deploy. Um, so it looks like we have success for all of our pod policy stuff. So if we log into the sim, this had absolutely nothing whatsoever in it. Uh, so it's just a brand new sim I just booted up. Um, you can see we're actually getting a leaf loaded up here. Let's see, my sim has been kind of sluggish uh, today with uh, <laughs> blasting in pages full of data at it. Here, I might need to put some pauses in there. Uh, but so we've got hardware commission, so we can look and see. What am I doing here? So these are the these are the, the switches from our spreadsheet here. So that's nice, and we got success, and they're right there. Um, he's staying on supportive, but that's just because he's you know, taking time to get discovered there. Then, let's see what else we got. So fabric access policies, we should be, well, we got mostly good there. We got some fails here, um, but we can just go ahead and look at our fabric access policies. Uh, we should have some switch profiles. We do indeed, we have quite a few. They're hooked to things. We've got interface selectors hooked. Da, 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 da. Yep, bunch of stuff here. We got a bunch of interface policies. Uh, kind of for all the things, kind of standard stuff that we deploy. Got some AEPs, got some VLAN pools. So things are looking pretty good. So we had some fails on our, what is this, interface selectors. So uh, that would be on probably these guys. So those just straight up failed. So we can go ahead and try to run that script again. Uh, we'll probably get some more fails, but hopefully we'll get some. Yep, there you go. So we clearly got some stuff coming in. Definitely need to add some pauses into that script, but uh, it's a good start. So I'm going to not save that deploy because now when we go back to this guy, we should have successes on our interface profiles. So that's very nice, right? Um, then pop it on over to tenants. Still got some fails in there. Uh, but let's go ahead and look and see what we got. Um, so obviously, we, I think you saw we had these tenants there before. They they made it in on the first run, apparently, which is good. Uh, but now we've got all these bridge domains. We've got a bunch of private networks. We've even got all three outs. I've got some kind of silly placeholder stuff in here. Like this guy. Sh Whoop, we, looks like our L3 out policies might have failed on us. Uh, or I deleted stuff. What did I do? Oh, because it's not on that one. Prod Enterprise, that's the one we're looking for. This guy should have an interface profile of kind of every flavor. Uh, OSPF policy push. We got BGP on an SVI. We got a BGP peer on a loopback. Uh, we should have some contracts and filters. These are just some kind of dummy ones here. And then part of what I wanted to do, so obviously this is kind of, this is maybe not the greatest demo because stuff is failing, right? Uh, but also kind of a good demo in that stuff is failing and we actually have feedback about it, right? So if I look at my EPGs, none of them should be hooked to my physical domains. And that's either because I screwed something up in the script, uh, like in the Python itself, maybe I fat fingered the, you know, the URI or whatever, or maybe I had something, you know, in here that's broken. Um, so let's go ahead and just kind of look, we we'll just pick on prod again. Seems like a good place to pick on. I, for some reason, I've been picking on this guy here. Um, yep, so no domains. Uh, da, 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 da. So that's, you know, maybe not great that it didn't deploy, but again, that's important feedback that we know it didn't. Uh, and here's the other one. This is the one, right? We said taco. Uh, so this should be under filter one. 
filter one. And you can see we've got filter one. Oh, you know, maybe I should probably call it something else here. Uh, da, 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 da. Uh, but you could see, we could see that failed, right? And it's an unknown failure uh, because there's a there's a try accept. If these can't be converted to either unspecified or integers, we we'll just kind of pass on that one call. So we we skipped this filter basically on purpose because we had some invalid stuff in the spreadsheet. So that's that's good to know. That's good stuff to have. So let's just go ahead and try to run that guy one more time. You can hear my laptop in the background. My fans are going all crazy here. Um, perfect. So it looks like everything actually ran this time. Um, we can see that we've got an invalid input, uh, invalid integer or other input, right? So that was probably the contract one because like I said, taco, as much as it pains me to say, is not a valid filter uh, port. Uh, but now going back to the spreadsheet, things are looking much better. Um, there's, our, there's our one fail. We should have one red guy. Uh, I don't know what I did here. Uh, I got to go back and look at that and clean that up in the library before I post this stuff. But uh, it's good to know that we're getting kind of good feedback from from the script. So that's that's kind of the quick demo. Um, hopefully, I'll write a blog post about this or something. Should be relatively self-documenting. I'm a terrible programmer, so don't you know hold me to that or anything. Uh, but I've definitely made sure that the the methods in the the, the ACI PDT, ACI Power Deployment Tool uh, file has you know what's optional, and then what the if you've got multiple things uh, that are, I guess I should say like a fixed value, right? So like we can have for domain status, we can have either created, created, mod comma modified, deleted. I guess we could probably have just modified as well, um, but these are generally the three that you would do, and pretty much always created, comma modified. But uh, if you have specific things. Uh, like yes or no, yes or no, or these things. I've tried to call that out, out everywhere. This is not by any stretch a fully uh, featured thing. Uh, easy example here, right? LLDP in, in the GUI or or you know, even with just straight up REST or with Cobra or whatever, we could change this to be, you know, and receive state for LLDP could be enabled and transmit state could be disabled. Uh, to keep things simple, I just left them the same because generally speaking, you're either gonna have LLDP on or you're gonna have LLDP off. This is not trying to uh, you know, cover every corner case or, or niche use. This is not really <laughs> intended to be anything other than a deployment tool. Um, it doesn't do VMM right now, although that's on, that's on my roadmap. Um, Eventually, I'd like to have it subscribe to faults. Uh, an earlier iteration of this will actually go back and query DNs for faults, and I, I'm hoping to add that in at some point, and it'll update the spreadsheet with the faults. Uh, it'll just give you the fault IDs, or we could put the fault descriptions in there. Um, but really, this is meant strictly for deployment, and not for like a steady state thing, uh, and not for you know corner case stuff. This is to get you 80, hopefully, maybe more percent of the way through a deployment, right? And obviously you still have to do tons and tons of work up front, figuring out all of your EPGs, your, you know, your L3 outs, uh, how are you doing your routing, blah, blah, blah. This doesn't take away any of that work for you, but hopefully it will help you to deploy it faster. And in my mind, uh, not that Postman is a bad tool at all, but hopefully this is a better tool for this particular use case, just because it is kind of custom made for it. So I think that's all for now. Thanks.